Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. If this is your first time visiting the channel, welcome. I'm Justin with Excel Smith. If you've been here before, welcome back. In this video, we'll build two equations that return the last row number of a data range. The first equation is shorter, but requires there to be no blank rows within the range. The second equation is a bit longer, but works regardless if there are blank rows in your data. With that, we've reached the end of this intro. Let's get started. Our simple data set consists of two number ranges in columns A and B. Column A contains a continuous set of numbers from 1 through 10. The data set in column B contains a range of numbers from 1 through 10, but with several numbers missing. In cell E2, let's build the first equation which utilizes the match function. To start, type an equal sign, the function name match, and then an open parentheses. The first parameter of match is the value we search for in the second parameter. Normally, this is some value from a range. For example, the number 4 in the range A2 through A11. However, for this equation, we want to find the first blank cell, which marks the end of our range. To do this, the second parameter will use the isBlank function, which returns either a true or false. Since we want to match the location of the first blank cell, we'll set the first parameter of match to true. Next, type a comma to go to the second parameter. This is where we'll enter the isBlank function. Type isBlank followed by an open parentheses. Normally, we enter a single cell into isBlank, which then returns a true if the cell is blank or false if it's not. In our example, we're going to pass in all of column A, which will give an array of trues and falses. After selecting column A, type a closing parenthesis to complete the isBlank function. Type a comma to go to the last parameter. The third parameter of match tells the function how precise it needs to be when searching for the first parameter inside the second parameter. For our equation, we only want a match if there is an exact match for the value in the first parameter, so we'll select option 0. Lastly, type a closing parenthesis and press enter. The equation returns 12, which is the first row after our data set. If this is what you need, you're good to go. For our use case, we wanted to get the row number for the last row of data. To do this, we simply need to subtract 1 from our equation. Select cell E2, then place the cursor at the end of the equation and then type a minus sign followed by the number 1, and then press enter. The equation now correctly returns 11, which corresponds to the last row of data in column A. The equation we built with match and is blank works great when the data is continuous like in column A. However, it doesn't hold up so well when there's breaks in the data like in column B. To see this, copy the equation to cell F2 by dragging the lower right-hand corner. Unlike in cell E2, the result when checking column B is the number 3. This happens because the match equation returns the first blank cell which in column B is in row 4. Subtracting 1 gives us the last row number before the blank. There could be a use for needing to find where blanks are in a data range. However, the goal for this video is to build an equation that finds the last row number of a range regardless if there are blank cells in the range or not. If you're getting value from this video, let us know by pressing the subscribe button. While you're at it, give that like button a press too. It's greatly appreciated and helps the channel grow. The match function is great if we know the range doesn't contain any blanks. To solve for the scenario where the range does contain blanks or might contain blanks, we can build an equation with the max function. This equation will find the last non-blank cell in a range and return the row number. Start by selecting cell E3. Next, type an equal sign, the function name max, and an open parentheses. Max takes a range of numbers and, like the name implies, returns the largest value. We can use this to return the last or largest row number containing data by passing in a range of all of the row numbers and seeing which ones are not blank. Type row followed by an open parentheses. To make sure we capture all of the data, we'll select all of column A. This is all we need for the row function, so we can type a closing parentheses. As is, this equation would simply return the last row number in column A. Neat, but not very useful. What we want is the last row of our data, or in other words, the last non-blank cell. We can accomplish this by combining the not and isBlank functions. We need to return the row numbers for all of the cells containing a value. This means we need to multiply the row function by the not and isBlank equation. Go ahead and type an asterisk followed by the function not and an open parentheses. Next, type isBlank followed by an open parentheses. For the isBlank function, we need to pass in the same range that we passed into the row function, which was all of column A. All that's left is to enter a few closing parentheses and press enter. Like with the match equation, we get the number 11, which corresponds to the last row of data in column A. This works because the not and is blank portion returns a true for the range A1 through A11 since those cells are not blank. It returns false for all of the cells beginning with cell A12 as these cells are blank. The row portion simply returns the row number for each row in column A. When we multiply trues and falses, the trues become ones and the falses become zeros. 
This means that for the range A1 through A11, we get 1 through 11 times an array of trues, or 1 through 11 times an array of ones. This returns the numbers 1 through 11. From cell A12 onwards, we get the row number times false, or zero, which results in a bunch of zeros. When we copied over the match function to cover the data in column B, it didn't give us what we wanted as match returns the first row matching the search criteria. Let's copy over this new equation to see what we get. That's awesome. Even though the data contains blank cells, we still get the last row for the entire data range. This works because row 11 contains a value which means we get 11 times true or 11 times one. It doesn't matter how many blanks come before it. Assuming there's no data after row 11, row 11 will always be the max value. In this video, we built two equations that return the last row of the data set. The second equation works even when the data range contains blank cells. Sometimes we need to delete blank rows within a data set. Check out this video to see a quick and easy way to do just that. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.